right, here we go. Six for you uh, this week, two minutes apiece. David Yates in two minutes. The changes to Royal Ascot this year, forced by COVID-19 with the addition of races, how many of those changes will become permanent, if any, do you think? I wouldn't be at all surprised if some of them did become permanent. The, the, the official line from Ascot, I believe, is uh, no plans at the moment, but also nothing ruled in, nothing ruled out. The, the, the answer that we're... Uh, we're used to getting from politicians. Um, I think there are some interesting races there. Uh, the five furlong handicap, the mile and six handicaps, I think they were both interesting. Personally, mm. I can take or leave, or I'd actually leave the Silver Hunt Cup yeah, and I the agree. Silver Wokium. You know, they're, 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 <laughs> to me, I, I'd, I'd leave those. Um, Do you not look at those as a newspaper tipster and think, give me more, give me a bronze, uh, give I, me a bronze I, I really Hunt don't. Cup. I mean, I, I really don't. <laughs> I know some people love those races personally. Uh, as a punter, I've never liked them, and as a tipster, I loathe them because you get one dart at the board. You know, Louis de Palma, 25 to mm. 1 fourth in the Silver Wokium, uh, silver wokium for, for Newsboy. Still a loser. Um, I think the pro of it is gives more people a chance to have a runner at Royal Ascot. Yes, that more, is true. More, more money generated, more levy generated. The bookies love them better for the sport in that regard. On the downside, I think that it, it means that you don't get the diversity of races. You end up with six, six, two, three six furlong races on the same day. Yeah, yeah. It's too samey. And the big races themselves, the Workingham and the Hunt Cup, kind of get lost in the they fog. They do, absolutely. I think that there is definitely scope. These days, I love six race cards. I, I grew up with six race cards and I really enjoy six quality races I, and to me seven race cards are, are absolutely fine i enjoy those too but i think six races are really a bit of an anachronism mm. now uh, so I, I would think that they would look at other those races i believe and i'm not particularly well connected uh, in royal circles but i'm told that the 230 start date is a uh, time. time is not up for negotiation that oh, that will stay but that extra races might be added. I, I, I keep the Queen Alexandra. I know it's an anachronism and it's an old race, but it's, it's, one, it's one opportunity maybe to pick the winner. Didn't manage it yesterday with the, the Grand Vizier, but... You know. once a, there was once a whole website campaigning to save Indeed, the Queen yeah. Alexandra stakes, and it worked. Well, draw bias. <laughs> I, this just pops up every year after Royal Ascot, doesn't it? It's a desperately difficult track to manage because of the width of it, and you don't really know whether there's a whether there's a, a bias created by the ground or just by the behaviour of the, of the riders. And the, and the going stick didn't suggest there should have been too much of a, of a bias one side or another, but the results sure as hell did confirm there was a the, bias towards high numbers. There are lots of different facets to this, aren't there? Uh, let me say firstly, um, after uh, I think it must have been Campanelli's win yesterday from stall one. Yes, correct. Uh, Frankie de Tori said on the, the Zoom press conference, I won't have a bias this week. I think that the track has been fair all the way around, and any results that you've seen, this wasn't, these aren't Frankie's exact words, but he, he, he implied that those results were, the, were a self-fulfilling prophecy on the part of the jockeys, where the early indications mm -hmm. were that the stand side was the place to be, and therefore, you know, that's, that's how it worked out. I'm not sure whether that's actually true, but to me, a draw bias is fine. I don't mind a draw bias as long as we know what it's going to be. Sometimes at Ascot's in the past, one day it's been the stand side, the next day it's been the far side. And that, to me, is the difficult thing. We go to Chester, we back horses that are drawn low, and we discount uh, the ones that are drawn high. I, I, except, I appreciate, uh, except over seven and a half hours. I yeah. appreciate that it's not, that that's not what owners want to hear, and they all want a, a fair lick of the sauce bottle, as it were. Um, but... And from a punting point of view, at, at, at least we, we knew where we stood this week. Quite how or why, I'm not quite sure, but that's certainly the way that, for the most part, those races unfolded. High numbers were, were what you wanted. So because of the 72-hour declarations, how far in advance were you doing your newspaper tipping? Um, and what I'm, you know what I'm driving at here. To what extent were you starting to change your view on what you were going to tip based on what you were seeing Tuesday, Wednesday for the back yeah, end of the week. Yeah, uh, very much so. But also, you know, the, the, we the, the weather as well made you do that mm. too. You know, the, you, you go into Thursday, Friday and you think, oh, is it soft ground? Well, sometimes say it's not that soft. Then, of course, you go into Saturday, it's a dry day and a hot day and it looks like it's 
sadly, that I, and I hate to say this because I, I, I work for a newspaper, that shows newspapers in, in a, 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 a pretty anachronistic light in that we're trying to file things for four o'clock the previous afternoon whereas in fact of course an awful lot happens with change of conditions in the the time that passes before the off. Now, team tactics is a very broad brush but you want to be quite specific here because this is a discussion relating to a tweet that was put out yesterday by Sheikh Farhad from Qatar Racing. Indeed this this is a very interesting one because uh, you can read that, it's on your screen now. Uh, the BHA have been included in that tweet, uh, and it's from one of the most significant owners and benefactors of the sport in British racing. Um, and it's not the first time that team tactics uh, have come under the spotlight in the last few months. You know, John Gosden will often uh, express the wish that it's going to be a clean race. Now, you don't need the code breakers at Bletchley Park uh, to, figure to, out what he means. To, to work out that. Um, the, the Irish Guineas was interesting because there were, is it six of the 11 runners uh, were stabled in, in Bally Doyle. Um, and afterwards, Ger Lyon said, we were, we were up against a football team. Now, I, but he I'm, also said, you put your big boy pants on, you know what you're going to get absolutely. if your horse is good enough, away it goes. That, that is very true. Now, I personally, I, I, if you run six horses in a race, then there is going to be an element of certain horses coming up against those runners from the same concern, because that's just a, that's a numbers game, isn't mm. it? I personally didn't see anything yesterday in St, the St James's Palace States other than the Aidan O'Brien uh, stable seeking to control the pace of the race. Now that's not team tactics, that happens on a race course uh, every day. But the uh, regulatory board in Ireland and the British Horse Racing Board will be well advised, and I know they've never listened to anything that I've ever said, uh, the BHA, but they will be well advised to keep an eye on this because it's, it, it is aimed at, at Bally Doyle. Let's, let's make no bones about that. And it's well, come, that tweet clearly is, yeah. E exactly. There, there, there was only one concern with multiple runners in the race. And when it's coming from a, a, someone like Qatar, the, 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 the man behind Qatar Racing, as you say, who spent fortunes uh, on horse racing in, in Britain and Ireland and Europe, uh, that is something that, that the BHA and the... Uh, Irish Horse Racing Regulatory Board will be well advised to keep an eye on. Let's talk about uh, Stradivarius and what the rest of the season might hold for him. John Gosden has put him in the arc this week and I think the owner Bjorn Nielsen would be quite keen to, to have a crack at that at some point and um, well why not really I mean they've been they've been very sporting with the way they've campaigned him um, in the past, I, I, I can think of running him in the, in the Doncaster Cup when no one was expecting that yes. last year and then going on to Champions Day where he got beaten and then running him in the Mile and a Half Coronation Cup Group 1. So it's not as though, it's not as though they've, they've played the easy game every time. No, and also, uh, last year they came to Champions Day at Ascot as it was run on the inside track, which mm. obviously is the one that's used for racing over hurdles. John Gosden said in the, the Zoom press conference, we didn't do the art last year, we did talk about it. Um, instead, we came here where we ran over a shortened two miles on the hurdles track and we got chinned. And that's more or less exactly what uh, the trainer said. Uh, it's definitely sporting. I think that when it comes to the autumn, uh, obviously, you hope to see an Abel there yeah. from the same uh, the same yard, but not the same ownership. So, as as the trainer has said, like you know, each each owner has the the option of sending their horses where they uh, will. I think it'd be very interesting. I think that that for a horse who's proved so much as a stayer, uh, is it an interesting option? to think outside the box. John Gosden mentioned Ardross, who was second to Akida uh, in the early 80s, I think 82 probably. Um, and I, I think it's an interesting one. I, I, against that, you would say, well, he ran against Gaeth in the yeah. Coronation Cup uh, at Newmarket. And Frankie said it was like running Mo Farah against Usain Bolt. Well, here's an interesting one. I think this year, even more than last year, John Gosden's got a, quite a job just picking picking different paths for different horses in his yard. You look at it now. I mean, I'm sure he will he will do it, but 
at some point he's going to have to run enable against either logician or Stradivarius or frankly darling or Fanny Logan or Lord North or I mean I could keep going yeah, I could yeah, keep going yeah. all at some point all bar two horses there are in different ownership aren't they yeah they're all in different the, ownership yeah, apart pair, from logician and enable and all the rest of yeah I mean it, it's a nice problem to have oh, but amazing. it's a, but it's, uh, it, it's um most trainers are for all that for all that those horses run for different owners they do like to keep them apart and the only bizarrely John Gosden hasn't got a derby horse at, at this point because Mishriff is going to go to the British Jockey Club derby gets now for half a million um, which we kind of suspected anyway I think yeah. our, our colleague Marcus Townend floated this in the mail a he few did ago. indeed it was an exclusive not the first exclusive by Captain Heath uh, in the Daily Mail he was particularly chipper uh, towards the end of this week unbearably so um, Yes, it's, it has indeed been topped up to uh, half a million. I sort of can see both sides of this, my liege. I don't know what political parties we normally vote for, but I... Well, I know which one I vote for, obviously. <laughs> um, I would acknowledge that you can't really run a derby for less than 300 grand, even in a... COVID-19 ravaged season. However, that if 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 we take that uh, the, the 200 grand between 300 and 500, that's still 200 grand that could have gone yeah. at the bottom of the pyramid, which is 80 very laudably the levy board of of guaranteed. Eight, I think 80 percent of the values at the bottom. Uh, Oh, I don't know. I, I think, think, I think looking at it in the round, the four, five and sixes have been well supported yes, since have. resumption yeah, of course. at the expense of the one, twos and threes. Right. Um, we've got some good executive contributions at Ascot so that the group ones were worth 142 grand to the winner, which I think was just about OK. I don't think we can run the derby for, for less than half a million. No, total I, I, I get that. I get that. I'd rather, in a perfect world, I would run it for... This, let's, there is not a single horse who would not run in the Derby at three hundred grand who will run it run at five hundred. You must concede that. I do concede that. But I think you really need your but, marquee, your signature yeah, race, a race I, that you love more than I any other. That. Yes, I do. Just yes. has to have some sense of, of, of I, difference I can, and yeah. a, to make, retain its global prestige. I concede that. Four fifty-five though. <laughs> the Irish 455 Guinness. is spot on. That's wow. exactly. I, you know, just before we move on, for years, for years, TV controllers and executives have tried to get Epsom to move the derby later, and it has been resisted for all sorts of nebulous reasons. And finally, this year, the effect of COVID 19 or whatever, or uh, impending ITV deal, I don't know. 455 they get. Okay, um, 455 is, is not terrible. No. Uh, it's not like it'll the, stick another know, million. It's still no worth stick another million on, but it'll stick another half a million on the viewing. Number. The Irish Guineas was six forty and seven fifteen. Mm. Seven fifteen mm. for the Irish one thousand. The first edition of the Sunday Mirror, which I write for, got two pars at the bottom of the Newbury okay. report. Okay. And I Understood. know print's not the only game in town, and We've I know got it's got on. its challenges. We've got to get on. Okay. Pin Pinatubo, I've got a lot yep. of people to talk to you. Pinatubo, what next for Pinatubo? What is Pinatubo? Who is Pinatubo? Will the real Pinatubo stand up? Champion two-year-old of last year. I just think it's plain and simple that lots of people who are experts in horse equine physique said this horse won't be as far ahead of the others at three because they're going to catch him up physically and that seems to have happened. I think it's probably on the evidence of yesterday he travelled so well that it's worth... Uh, sticking back to seven for the Jean Prat, the Foray, maybe the the uh, the Lennox Stakes at the Qatar Goodwood Festival. I don't. I think he'd get a bit of a shock if he came up against six furlong horses in in a Group One personally. But uh, I just don't think he's. Uh, he. It, we were talking beforehand, and we were discussing whether he was the too darn hot of 2020, mm. the dominant two-year-old who um, found life tougher at three. I was very careful with too darn hot on social media not to say that horse won't win a group one race at three because i think i thought he probably would do but that he wasn't any he wouldn't enjoy anything like the superiority that he did i'm not sure that pinatubo is going to win a, a group one race this year i really hope he does but if he but if he does i think it's probably going to be one of the less fiercely contested ones probably over seven 
Okay, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's plenty of stamina in the damn side of his pedigree, but he doesn't seem to be running to that at the moment. No, no. And very interesting to hear what Frankie de Tori said yesterday about how he felt he beat Pinatubo. Yeah, yeah. And Pinatubo travelled very, very well in that race, didn't he? And would, would Pinatubo have won had he sat closer to the pace? I don't know. Uh... And then made the made, made they made the move more gradually yeah, rather than it. rather than running into the into a quickening tempo. Possibly, I mean, you know, but I'm not sure. We're, we're looking. It's a every every uh, every time we look at a jockey's tactics, we do so through the prism of the result, don't yes, we? Yes, of course we and, do. You know, of course we do. Um, what next for Pinatubo? I wonder.